Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Colombo Field located at Marciano Stadium, City Champions, Brockton, Mass. Tonight, we have a real barn burner. We've got the Notre Dame Cougars versus the Brockton Boxers. We're talking women's varsity soccer. On this night, let's see if I get the date right, October 8th? 9th. I was close, I was close. Uh, it is October, so it's it's getting towards the Halloween season. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity. There's a film festival coming up in Easton. Uh, there's only two rules, so it's fairly simple. We've got the first rule is it has to the film has to be completely original, and the second rule is it has to be 100 seconds or less. And for those who aren't the best at math like me, that is one minute and 40 seconds. Now. Our camera guy tonight, the one, the only, the prolific cinematographer, Aaron Tebow, is creating an original piece for this. And from what he tells me, it's going to be amazing. And that's all I'm going to tell you. You're going to have to go to the film festival and find out. So the Brockton Boxers take the field. We've got the Notre Dame Academy Cougars. And uh, looks like a, a huddle on one knee at the 10-yard line for football. Now they split up. And we're going to have an uh, opening kickoff here at Marciano Stadium. So we're getting ready for our uh, opening kickoff here at uh, Colombo Field, surrounded by the Harry C. Allen track at Marciano Stadium. And just, uh, I believe that's south, we have the John Waldron Snack Shack. So, uh, Quite the, the amount of names here at Marciano Stadium. All well deserved. Notre Dame controlling in their own defensive zone. Kick it up. They're playing the short passing game. Oh, good move there by number eight for Notre Dame as we get an offside. That's Gabby Kenyon. So I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, bringing you all the action here from Marciano Stadium. You guys might be wondering, where's the one, the only newbie, Rateau? He actually, he, he got the day off today. He's working on Saturday. He's got, I think he's got football on Saturday. So uh, they, they handed me the, the commentating duties, and here we go. An opportunity for the Brockton. Good defense by Notre Dame, but Brockton still has it. Brockton still controlling. That's number seven. Mariah Texera, and a good save by... The keeper for Notre Dame, Maggie Elliott, and she boots it downfield. Good header by Notre Dame to get it up. Now a possible odd woman rush here. Good defense by Brockton, breaks it up and they send it back downfield. Notre Dame controlling. Once again, the short passing game, very effective. You see that a lot with the Brockton High boys team. Um, and good defense by Brockton, knocking off, off that pass off uh, offline, breaking up the, uh, the possible breakaway. See, Notre Dame is offsides again, and they're going to have to get that under control if they're going to have any opportunities this game. Brockton ready, getting ready to boot it downfield. Line drive kick, one about 40 yards football on the football field. They do use the same field, but there are different markings on the field. You can see there's red lines painted on the, the soccer part of the field. They go over the, the football field, the, the soccer field is bigger. The goalkeeper, Maggie Elliott for Notre Dame, calling for that one and she gets it. Good defense by Notre Dame, however, Brockton's still controlling in their offensive zone. Playing short passes. Onsides, number 22 
for Brockton, that would be Jennifer Caruso with an opportunity. However, the goalkeeper for Notre Dame standing strong out in net. Lots of communication on the field for Notre Dame. They're cheering on each other when they collect passes, when they do something good, and that's good for morale, especially in a, a marathon game, 40 minutes a half. Lots of uh, communication, positive energy out on the field. Good defense by Brockton. And here's in a breakaway for Notre Dame. Good defense by... Number 13 for Brockton, and that is Lindsey Gomes, the senior captain midfielder, breaking up that excellent opportunity, and now we'll have a corner kick from Notre Dame. It will be Sarah Rawson, the junior midfielder, putting that one in bounds. She kicks it right out in front. The ball is loose. And a goal by Notre Dame! Wow. Not much better execution on a corner kick than that. The ball was loose out in front. I thought Brockton was going to kick it out of bounds, but Notre Dame collected it somehow, and they were able to put it in the back of the net. So Notre Dame leads 1-0 with 35 minutes left in the first half. Remember, the official time is kept on the field. And there's a kickoff, so Brockton now controlling. Turnover by Brockton. Notre Dame has it at midfield. Notre Dame goal by Morgan Karen. That Notre Dame goal was brought to you courtesy of Morgan Karen, number 21, the de sophomore defenseman. I'd like to take this opportunity. We have a couple of congratulations in order. First and foremost, Dr. Flaviano DeFalco turned the ripe old age of, I was told, 30. <laughs> So we're going with 30 on that one. And the one, the only, Samuel Bath. is another rush for, uh, for Notre Dame. Good opportunity and good defense by Brockton. And we'll have a corner kick. So the one, the only, Samuel Bath uh, was just promoted to captain in the United States military. So we want to send our congratulations out to him. Good kick, and the header doesn't connect 100%, and Brockton takes over. However, Notre Dame takes over on a turnover, and they have it to play in the short passing game, and we have an offsides. At the 10-yard line, so number 13 for Brockton, Lindsey Gomes will kick it downfield. That ball goes out of bounds at the 30-yard line. So Brockton with the throw-in. And now Notre Dame takes over on a turnover on downs. Notre Dame... Excellent passing early in this game. And good defense by Brockton there to break up that, that potential opportunity for Notre Dame. And a race for the ball here. A little push. Let's see who gets the call. Brockton will have a penalty kick at the 18-yard line. Who's going to take it? Let's see. It's 
going to be number 10 for the boxers, Narita Montrand. See the goalkeeper, he's lining up some of the walls for Notre Dame here. Narita with a chip shot and a good save by Maggie Elliott for Notre Dame. Keeping the edge for Notre Dame at 1-0. Good stop by Notre Dame there. And they pass it upfield. And Brockton takes over. Ooh. And a header right at midfield by Notre Dame. We could hear that one all the way up here. And a good save by Brockton's goalkeeper, Lawrence Seaver. Good keep in there by number seven for the boxes, Mariah Tetera. So back and forth action here at Marciano Stadium. Notre Dame holds the edge as of now, one to nothing over the Brockton Boxers. And is another opportunity for Notre Dame. Lawrence Seaver comes out very aggressively and picks up the ball to save the opportunity for the Notre Dame Cougars. Brockton bringing it upfield. That one goes out of bounds right in front of the Notre Dame bench. Right where the head coach for Notre Dame, Liz Mustafoski, is standing. And good defense there by Notre Dame, kicking the ball out of their defensive zone out to midfield. And Brockton will put it right back in. And Notre Dame's goalie, Maggie Elliott, will make another stop. Brockton boots it back. Number 22, Jennifer Caruso, with the ball now. Notre Dame takes over. Good deflection pass right there from Notre Dame. That one goes out, Notre Dame throwing. Good keep in there by Notre Dame, not allowing Brockton to have possession. It's again, Notre Dame playing the short passing game, very efficiently moving the ball upfield. Pass right through the middle up to Notre Dame and Brockton with good defense there. That was number 13, Lindsey Gomes stepping up and his near to Montrand and a good save by Maggie Elliott. The score somehow is still Notre Dame one, Brockton nothing. Lots of communication out there for the boxers now. Notre Dame takes over and here's a dangerous opportunity. And a good save by Lauren Seaver. The goaltending has been excellent thus far in this game. Both Maggie Elliott for Notre Dame and Lawrence Seaver for Brockton standing strong 
in net for their respective teams. Notre Dame, excellent control on the passing. Good move, and number 24 has an opportunity right out in front. She cuts it wide. And we have a penalty, possibly a push-off from Notre Dame, so the Brockton Boxers will have a penalty kick from their own end zone on the football field. They move it up to the one-yard line. Just about 26 minutes left in unofficial time in the first half. Scores Notre Dame 1, Brockton nothing. Now we have another push-off penalty. Brockton will have a chance to move it even further upfield. So it's a beautiful night for soccer here at Marciano Stadium. The temperature may or may not be a balmy 72 degrees. The wind is about two and a half miles an hour to south-southwest. And we've got the A team tonight. We got Aaron Tebow on camera, Mad Dog Matt Nelson on commentary, bringing you all the action. And an offsides called just barely. Notre Dame may have been an inch offsides, and the refs called it. But offsides is offsides. Distance does not matter. Lindsey Gomes kicks it downfield. Notre Dame takes over, and they're showing off their speed and another offsides. They were offsides by about a yard that time. So Lindsey Gomes, another chance to uh, boot it downfield. And a good, good, a high line drive kick goes to the, uh, the opposing 25 yard line. Now Brockton with good short passing. Jennifer Caruso right out in front, and she is taken down. Where is the whistle? That would be the equivalent to a horse collar tackle. And the ref's whistles stay in their pockets. I don't know about that one, but nonetheless, we'll have a goal kick here for Notre Dame. A good... Uh, I don't even know what to call that, a back kick for the, uh, the Brockton Boxers. Excellent control. Very evenly matched teams here tonight. The goals, goalies are good, the defenders are good, the offense getting a lot of opportunities, but the defense breaking them all up. Good pass through double coverage there from Brockton. And there's another opportunity for Brockton. The kick is up, and the kick is just wide and behind the net. So another goal kick coming up for Notre Dame. Low line drive goes about 25 yards. Notre Dame with good, uh, good control on the ball. Excellent passing. Here's an opportunity, and that one is whistled off sides. I'd like to welcome to the booth Aaron Tebow to talk about his upcoming 100 second film, which I don't know the title of yet. What's the title, Aaron? I haven't figured out the title yet. Um, it's going to be a horror. That's all I know. It's a horror film. It's a horror film. That's all we know. And it's starring the one, the only, Liz Tebow. And Aaron Tebow. Here's an opportunity for Brockton if they can catch it. And Maggie Elliott charges out of her net aggressively to make the stop. Oh, 
A three on two developing, and that one is whistled off sides as well. And the Notre Dame fans in the uh, the crowd tonight, very vocal, we'll put that, with all of the offsides calls. Lindsey Gomes boots it downfield. Good header by Brockton, but it ends up in Notre Dame's hands. And incidental contact, they rule, and we will have a couple of substitutions. The first of the game, number two, number five, and number 14 for the boxes. That would be Yasmini Texera, Michaela Norman, and Maria Del Pico. I apologize in advance for any mispronunciations. I'm not the best. Just about 21 minutes left in unofficial time. We have a couple of whistles and let's see what we have called here. The ref is talking to one of Notre Dame's players. And we are good to go. Short kick inbounds. Not a technique we see very often in high school soccer. Usually the player responsible for putting it inbounds decides to boot it downfield. Good stop there by number 22 for the boxers, Jennifer Caruso. And Notre Dame boots it downfield. Notre Dame slightly faster team than Brockton tonight. And, oh, off the post! Wow! Wow, I thought that was sure for a goal. Once it got, got past Lauren Seaver, it hit the right post and bounced back right into Lauren Seaver's arms. What an opportunity. They say sports are games of inches. Nothing makes that more apparent than what we just saw here at Marciano Stadium. Notre Dame with another opportunity here. Charging upfield and good defense by Brockton. And then we have a handball. I was just about to say, I thought that bounced right off, her, off of her hand. And the refs call that one. So Brockton will have a free kick. They push it back to the 49, 50 yard line right at midfield above the giant boxer head. Lindsey Gomes boots it. Good header by Notre Dame and they take it back out to midfield. And here's an opportunity, and a goal! Brockton goal scored by Jennifer Caruso. We are even here at Marciano Stadium. It doesn't get much better than this, folks. And we'll have a timeout called by Notre Dame, I believe. Now that we have some time, like I said, it is the Halloween season. Tune into Brockton Community Access. You will see one of the best short films I have ever seen in my entire life. It's called Spirits of the Dead. Produced, directed, Pretty much everything else on it was done by the one, the only, Aaron Tebow. Now we'll be playing nonstop on Brockton Community Access. It's also on YouTube. It's on the blast button. It's on the blast button on, on the server we use at Brockton Community Access. That one is courtesy of Mike Simmons. He just hits the blast button and it, it puts it in like 75,000 times a day. It's only 
five it minutes. Runs, I think it runs like every 15 minutes on Halloween. It, it runs every 15 minutes on Halloween, so you have plenty of opportunities to see it between now and then. It is one of channel the best. Nine. Channel 9. That is our public channel. It's starring Arnie Danielson as Edgar Allan Poe, and he does a fantastic acting job. It is absolutely fantastic. It puts you right in the mood for Halloween. And there's plenty of opportunity to see it. It's only five minutes, so you have absolutely no excuses. I could find five minutes of everyone's day just to watch that. So Notre Dame getting ready to put it back in play. After the timeout, we have just under 18 minutes left of unofficial time. Notre Dame is kicking the ball the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to be going towards Brockton's goal, not away from it. Good ball control by Brockton. So Jennifer Caruso ties the game with just about 18 minutes left. One to one, and an excellent goal. Excellent goals, I should say. Both, both of the goals scored thus far, uh, one for each team, have been excellent opportunities where just a lucky bounce has put them in, in the opportunity to score. And we have a penalty on Notre Dame So Brockton will have a free kick, and we will see Lindsey Gomes, the senior midfielder, kick it downfield again. Notre Dame takes possession. A little bit of a wild pass there, and Brockton now with an opportunity to move the ball upfield. Excellent keeping, and that one goes out of bounds. Jen Caruso not able to keep that one in. So we have a quick throw in here by Notre Dame. And they're playing, now they're playing a game of kick it to whoever's open, regardless of where they are. It's a strategy that can work. They kick it up. Notre Dame with an excellent opportunity and Brockton with the excellent defense and we'll have a corner kick forthcoming. And good defensive header by Brockton. And the kick is up and just wide right. We haven't seen a field goal attempt yet. Now personally, I think that a field goal that is kicked correctly from at least 10 yards out should be three points for the team who kicks it. Ball is loose out in front. Brockton's got it for the moment. Good defense by Brockton. Struggling and pushing the ball up to midfield. Now it's a foot race to the ball. And the Brockton defender wins and kicks it out of bounds. We'll have a Notre Dame throw in. Notre Dame with an opportunity here. They have it in the corner. Good defense by Brockton, right out in front of the net. 
and the defender is able to clear it up and out of the zone, we'll have another Notre Dame throw-in. Good defense at midfield by Notre Dame there, and they take over. Brockton takes it right back. Excellent defense, all phases of the field. Brockton trying to chase that one down, just kicked a little bit too far out of the reach. I believe that was Jen Caruso charging up field to try to get that one. Notre Dame bringing it upfield. We have an opportunity here. And just wide. And you can hear the exasperated Notre Dame fans in the crowd. Literally about two feet away from going in. And if this game doesn't come out in Notre Dame's favor, you're going to wonder if those few inches came into play with the post and that opportunity we just saw where the kick went just wide will be at fault. Oh, Notre Dame with excellent defense there. Able to break up the odd man rush for Brockton. And now we have an opportunity for Notre Dame the other way. Lindsey Gomes. Excellent defense. The ball is still live. What a sequence of events. Brockton had an odd man rush upfield. Notre Dame broke that up, brought it back the other way. Notre Dame had an odd, odd man rush upfield. And Lindsey Gomes with an excellent defensive slide tackle, able to break that one up. Now Brockton brings it back the other way. And now one goes off of the foot of the Brockton forward and out of bounds. That was number eight, Nicole Fernandez. Good control by the Brockton player. That was number 12, Haley Miller. And an offside is called by Notre Dame. Notre Dame's coach, Liz Mustafoski, yelling at the referees, explaining to them what an offsides really is. And as much as I side with no one, um, offsides is offsides, the refs have a better view than the coaches do from either side of the field. Back and forth action here at midfield. I don't even want to say who has possession because every three seconds it changes. So the score is one to one. Nine minutes and 30 seconds of unofficial time left in the first half. Matt Nelson bringing you all the action from Marciano Stadium. Good defense by Notre Dame, and they kick that one out right into the hands of assistant coach Drayton Mustafoski for Notre Dame. Back and forth headers in the Notre Dame defensive zone. 
And that one is kicked right to the feet of the head coach for Notre Dame, Liz Mustafoski. Good ball control by Jen Caruso. And an errant kick goes right out of bounds. And we have a Notre Dame throwing. Brockton has it for the moment. Good keeping by Brockton. Now one off the back of one of the Notre Dame players. And Brockton able to keep control. And we like, we'll have a penalty called on Brockton and a Notre Dame free kick from the middle of their own zone. Notre Dame bringing it up. They rule that one off on sides, rather. But Lauren Seaver the senior goalkeeper for Brockton charges out and grabs that one before the Notre Dame forward had a chance to play it. Here's an opportunity for Brockton. Jen Caruso and Maggie Elliott, the goalkeeper for Notre Dame, with another good stop. We've seen a couple of those tonight. We'll have a push off. We'll have an over the back called on Brockton. So Notre Dame with a free kick from the 41 yard line. Line drive, good header by Brockton to eliminate the immediate threat. Lindsey Gomes kicks it upfield. Notre Dame with the short passing. Again, excellent, efficient passing. And they are it, a faster team. The refs are letting them play a little bit here now. Saw a couple of push-offs there by both sides, and the ref kept their whistles down. And now we'll have some substitutions for both teams. Bad communication by the refs there. One is calling for the subs to come in. That was a weird situation that I've never seen before in high school soccer. Now the subs will be allowed to come in. The refs, I don't know if the refs are on the same page right now. So we'll have a Brockton throw in. We haven't seen the flip tonight yet. Oh no. <laughs> For those of you who are wondering what the heck I'm talking about, um, once in a while when a soccer player goes to inbound the ball, they will do a flip and they that somehow they get a little more power on the ball and it goes a little bit further. And it's an amazing sight. I don't know how many high schoolers can do a flip while throwing, while holding and throwing a soccer ball. But it's an amazing display of athleticism. I hope we have the chance to see at least one by the end of tonight. Brockton good defense. And they kicked that one right into the hands of assistant coach. For Brockton. Lots of communications for both teams, and they rule that in offsides. Yeah. 
and the ref having a talking to with one of the Notre Dame players who was yelling at him for calling it offsides. Um, just a verbal warning telling her that he knows how to do his job and you're a player, not a ref. And we hear the, uh, the official warning from the ref's mouth. Next time, it's going to be a yellow card. Notre Dame, excellent ball control right now. Brockton, good defense. And that one's called offsides. The Notre Dame players are just throwing up their hands. They can't seem to get a break on the offsides calls. And Lindsey Gomes will kick this one off from the 30-yard line. Three minutes of unofficial time left in the first half. Official time is kept on the field. Notre Dame's got that one. And a good stop by the head coach, Andrea Tassinari, for Brockton. She looked like she could be a goalkeeper there with uh, an amazing stop on the sidelines. Brockton with an opportunity now. An errant pass and Notre Dame takes over. They could turn this into a quick strike. Notre Dame player looked like she was offsides, but the rest let it go this time. And we have a takedown on the far sideline. Notre Dame with a free kick. They put it in quickly. Short passing and Notre Dame with an opportunity right out in front. They kick in a good save by Lauren Seaver. A little under two minutes left in unofficial time. Excellent efforts both sides of the, the field tonight thus far. We've got Brockton, excellent defense, excellent goalkeeping, and a couple of Excellent opportunities on the offensive side. And the exact same thing goes for Notre Dame. Good move, but Notre Dame takes over off a turnover. Good defense by Brockton and a handball not called by the ref. And Brockton got away with one right there. Refs ruling that one incidental. An opportunity for Notre Dame here. They are ruled on sides. It's a foot race. Off the post again. What are the odds? What are the odds? We've seen two almost goals off the post. And we have an injury from Brockton. I don't know how that one happened. The ball was all the way in Brockton's goal. Or I should say just inches away from Brockton's goal going off the post. We've got a Brockton player down sitting up talking to Jerry Connors, the athletic trainer. Very talented, very skillful Jerry Connors. Not really sure how she got injured. It might have been she wasn't watching where she was going and collided with a player or another player collided with her and they banged heads. Something of that sort. But we will try to get that information out to you as soon as possible. So... 
Jerry Connors and Andrea Tosinari, the head coach, helping that player to her feet. They're still standing out at the 41-yard line. Now she walks off with a little bit of help, which you never want to see. Walking very gingerly over to the sideline where she will be further evaluated by the trainer for Brockton. And that was number 12 for Brockton. Haley Miller, the senior defender, so that will be a big blow if she's not able to return. So we'll have a corner kick, goal kick, throw in. I don't know what we'll have. We'll have something to get the ball back in play. It'll be a Notre Dame throw in. I'm not sure if anybody knew what was going on, but now we have a Brockton goal kick. Nobody was moving. Notre Dame now has possession. Good defense. An excellent, excellent series of events by number 13 for the boxers, Lindsey Gomes. And she will kick the ball off from the 41 and a half yard line. Low line drive. Brockton still has possession, moving the ball slowly but surely upfield. Notre Dame kicks it back out to midfield, out of bounds and off the trash barrel across the field. Throw in for Brockton. Notre Dame takes it, turns it over to Brockton. Out of bounds, Brockton throwing. Refs looking at their watches now. I believe the next change of possession will be the half, and I was right. So halftime, here's your summary. Excellent defense, excellent goalkeeping. Opportunities left and right for both teams. The score, Notre Dame Cougars won, Brockton Boxers won. We'll head to the half and we'll see you for the second half. This is the moment I knew. His future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you back to Armin Colombo Field at Marciano Stadium for this edition of Lady Boxers Soccer. We have a real barn burner on our hands tonight. The Cougars of Notre Dame, the Boxers of Brockton, tied at one after 40 minutes. Excellent defense, excellent goalkeeping. Excellent offense. Brockton highest possession to start off the second half. The game summary brought to you by me, Matt Nelson. Couple of posts for Notre Dame. Kicked it right off the right post of Brockton in the first half. Game of inches and they had another couple of opportunities that went just wide. The score could easily be four, five, six, Brockton with an equal number of opportunities on the other side of the ball. So, this is a tie game. Not just the score. It's an even match. Both teams. We've had a lot of offsides called tonight. Specifically on Notre Dame. And I believe they ruled that one out of bounds. 
So we'll have a Brockton boxer throwing. And a Brockton free kick. So we've got a, a bunch of events coming up. We've got the 100 Second Film Festival coming up at Easton Community Access. The one, the only Aaron Tebow is making a film. And I advertised it earlier. I forgot to mention the deadline for submissions is Halloween, October 31st. Woo! Submit your best films. The screening, let's see if I can get this one right, will be November 7th, 9th. I was close, only two days off. So the screening will be November 9th. And you can bet I'm going to be there, just because I'm so excited to see all these 100-second films. Good defense by Notre Dame, and we'll have a corner kick, I believe, maybe. Suzanne, corner kick? I'm sorry, what? We're going to have a corner kick? I would appear so, yes. We're going to have a corner kick. I'm still trying to find out all the, the rules, regulations, and how this game works. I wait till someone's standing at the corner, then I know it's a corner kick. That's a good enough strategy. It's a surefire way. <laughs> That's a good enough strategy. Jen Caruso kicking that one in bounds. And that one goes just wide off of a deflection kick from Brockton. So now we'll have a goal kick. And I'm only guessing that it's a goal kick because everyone's running downfield. Brockton with possession bringing it up. Good short passing. Number 10 for the boxers, Narita Montrand, brings it up. The ball's loose out in front. The kick is up and good. The first field goal of the night brought to you by the Brockton boxers. That one almost went wide, but it was right through the uprights. And uh, that should at least be one and a half points for the boxers. Personally, I think the football team should be coming to the soccer games to recruit the kickers. Um, Brockton has missed a couple of field goals in the last few years and had, have, has had some struggles at the place kicker position. Soccer players, very powerful legs, and they can, uh, they can really boot the balls up there. And a Notre Dame player goes face first into the boxer head. Quick kick in. And good defense by Brockton. The spinorama move straight out of the video games. And a whistle. We have a free kick for Brockton. This game has been sloppy thus far in the second half, a very excellently played first half. It's been sloppy thus far, about five minutes into the second half. Mad Dog Matt Nelson bringing you all the action, the one, the only Aaron Tebow on camera. Low line drive kick. Opportunity for Lindsey Gomes, she boots it. And it goes just wide. We will have a goal kick. Notre Dame bringing it up. 
Opportunity, Lauren Seaver, the goalkeeper for Brockton, comes out and grabs that one before Notre Dame can do anything with it. Narita Montron bringing it up, right in front of the boxer's bench. An opportunity for Brockton. And Maggie Elliott, the goalkeeper for Notre Dame, another excellent stop. And she boots it downfield. For those of you just joining us, the score is the Notre Dame Cougars won. Brockton Boxers won. Excellently played game thus far. About seven minutes into the second half. Catch all the action on Brockton Community Access. And tune in to our social media presence. Our brand new social media presence. We tweet all the scores, city events, videos from meetings, pretty much everything. You can follow us on Twitter at Brockton Channel. Stay up to date with all of the events happening in your city. We have a timeout called. I don't know why we have a timeout called. Why do we have a timeout called? Anybody? Time in? Official time is kept on the field. Lots of communication for both teams out there right now. No one st stays in bounds. Even the refs have good communication now. Um, they're yelling commands at the players like the ball is in, keep playing. Now when we have a push off, I believe, so we will have a kick for Brockton. It looks like Narita Montrand will be taking the kick. The junior forward for Brockton. Puts it up. Notre Dame heads it. We have a call. And a Notre Dame kick. Good moves by uh, the Notre Dame forwards and midfielders. Bring the ball up. And we'll have a Brockton Boxer throw in. So we're uh, in early October now, otherwise known as the best time of year. We've got the Red Sox still playing. They just won the uh, American League Divisional Series, and they get to wait until Sunday when the Championship Series will start. And there's an opportunity for Brockton. It's going to be a breakaway. A kick and a good save by Maggie Elliott for Notre Dame, keeping the score knotted at one apiece. Excellent opportunity for the Brockton Boxers. Here to Montreal now controlling midfield. And we'll have a goal kick by Maggie Elliott. Or I should say the Notre Dame Cougars. So this is my favorite time of year. The Red Sox still playing, going into... The second round of the postseason. We've got the Bruins just started their season. The Celtics just started their season or are about to start their season. And the Patriots just started their season. It's almost enough that I have to line up four TVs every night just so I can watch everything. Good takeaway by Brockton. However, they turn it right back over to... Notre Dame, and then they take it right back. Lots of back and forth action in midfield tonight. 
And that one goes right over the heads of the Brockton Boxers bench. We'll have a throw-in from Notre Dame. Good takeaway by Narita Montron. What a move. Jen Caruso now has it. Brockton controlling. Pass over to Jen Caruso. Random shouts of Jenny, Jenny from all over the field. Narita puts it out in front of the net. Notre Dame takes over. Lots of communication coming from all the players on the field and the bench helping out the players on the field and we will have a Notre Dame throw in. And a Notre Dame substitute, I believe. Yes. A Little bit of a pause there by the, the official. A Little bit of a pause by the official. I'm not sure what that was about, but we play on. So I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson bringing you all the action alongside the one, the only Aaron Thibault, cinematographer, cameraman, video expert extraordinaire. Lots of yelling from the field. I don't even know what's going on anymore. That one goes out of bounds. Good stop by the head coach of Brockton, Andrea Tassinari. Was she a goalkeeper at one point? I think there might have been a few games when she was a kid that she stepped into goal, but overall, no, she didn't. She's made a couple of excellent stops on the sideline tonight. I think that's self-preservation. <laughs> self-preservation, there you go. Another substitute for Notre Dame. An opportunity for Brockton, and it goes just wide. Brockton with a couple of excellent opportunities so far in the second half. The score is still knotted, one to one. A very chilly night here at Marciano Stadium. The temperature has dropped from perfect to less than perfect. Chilly. Brockton controlling. Good between the legs pass by Brockton. Lindsay Gomes. Oh, and she goes down face first, and we will have a whistle and a free kick. And Lindsay Gomes, slow to get up. And that is a sight that nobody wants to see. And they're calling for the trainer, Jerry Connors. This could be a game-changing moment right here. Lindsey Gomes, easily the most, or one of the most impactful players thus far in the game and the season, is slow to get up. And she will have a visit from Jerry Connors and Andrea Tassinari with just under 26 minutes left, unofficial time in the second half. So Brockton and Notre Dame have a couple of substitutions ready to come in. And Lindsey Gomes still down. You, you hope that it's just a cramp or something of that sort. What's the status, Suzanne? Anything? Kind of seeing what they can do with their leg moving it around. Uh, 
Suzanne does have the pair of binoculars up here at the press box at Marciano Stadium, so she can see a lot better than I can what's going on on the field. Looks like the trainer for Brockton, Jerry Conn, is just working on Lindsey Gomes' leg. Looks like a muscle cramp. She gets up gingerly and is walking off mostly under her own power, limping, trying not to move that left leg too much. So a couple of injuries to the Brockton boxers tonight. Very unfortunate. A couple of... Uh, A couple of uh, defenders for Brockton injured in Lindsey Gomes. She's a senior midfielder and number 12, Haley Miller, the senior defender. So Lindsey Gomes still walking under her own power on the sideline headed towards the Brockton bench. We'll keep an eye on that one for you as well. Rita Montrand for the boxers controlling at midfield. She passes it over to number two, Yasmini Texera, the junior midfielder and defender. Notre Dame takes over. Opportunity for Notre Dame, and Lauren Seaver in an excellent play, charging out of her net full speed to break up that opportunity and a very high kick that doesn't go very far. Just under 25 minutes of unofficial time left. Narita Montron goes down, pops right back up, and we'll have a Brockton free kick. <laughs> Notre Dame header puts it right back out of midfield. And Notre Dame will have a throw in. Rita Montrand controlling through a plethora of defenders. She passes right to a Notre Dame defender. Now one's put it right out in front. Notre Dame will take over. Jen Crusoe right out in front. So looks for someone open. She finds Narita Montrand. Opportunity for Brockton, and a goal! Let's see if we can pinpoint who that was. Deflection right out in front. I believe that that was number two for the boxers, maybe. Brockton goal by Yasmina Texera. Maybe. Number 24, maybe. Sorry, Maya. Maya Powers. Number 18, Maya Powers. A little bit difficult to see when you've got a crowd of people in front of the net. And on top of that, you've got the girls' ponytails blocking the numbers. A valiant effort by the stadium announcer, Suzanne DeFalco. The crowd is very helpful when it, when it comes to... And 
And an offsides on Notre Dame. Again. I've lost track at how many offsides the refs have called tonight. So Maya Powers puts the boxers ahead by a score of 2-1 to one over the Notre Dame Cougars. And that could be the defining moment in this game. Back and forth action at midfield. Nobody's got definitive possession. We have a whistle. We have a substitute. We've got another whistle. We must have a flock of birds on the field. We've got a couple of whistles, a couple of tweets. Number seven, Mariah Texera comes out for the boxers. Brockton with possession. Midfield bring it up. And Notre Dame takes over off of a turnover. Kicks this one out in front. Lawrence Seaver in a foot race and she grabs it before Notre Dame can attack any further. Lawrence Seaver has been a rocking net for the Brockton Boxers tonight. Foot race to the ball. Notre Dame wins momentarily. Now it's kicked right to Narita Montron for the boxers. She puts it up and Notre Dame takes over. And right to Yasmini Texera. Back and forth action. Notre Dame takes over. I think I should just stop saying who's got possession because it changes so often. Rita Montrand in the offensive zone. Over to Yasmini Texera. A long kick. A bobble by Maggie Elliott. However, she corrals it and boots it downfield. Matt Nelson bringing you all the action. BCA Sports presentation of Lady Boxers Varsity Soccer between... Brockton and the Cougars of Notre Dame Academy. Lauren Seaver makes another stop and she will kick it downfield. The score is Brockton Boxers 2, Notre Dame 1. Jen Caruso now has possession. She kicks it right past you as Mini Texera. And Notre Dame has the ball off a turnover. He has an opportunity for Notre Dame. See if anything comes of it. Good shut down defense by the Brockton Boxers. That one goes out right to the middle of the field. Notre Dame has it. An excellent opportunity. And a goal! Notre Dame Academy comes Dame right Dame back. Hannah Volp for Notre Dame ties the game at two apiece with just about 18 minutes left in unofficial time. We've got a real barn burner on our hands and we will have a timeout, I believe. I believe we'll have a timeout called by Brockton. Wow, what a game. It's a timeout by somebody. I'm not sure if it's Brockton or, or Notre Dame. But a timeout's a timeout. The clock stops. And we will have a short break here. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of the help we've gotten with tonight's presentation. Stadium announcer, stat extraordinaire, Suzanne DeFalco. We've got cameraman, cinematographer... Best at everything to do in the field. The one, the only, Aaron Tebow. We've got yours truly, the commentator, who's not really good at anything but commentating. Mad Dog Matt Nelson. 
and we've got help from the crowd who is helping us announce the right score and who scores. So we've got Brockton Boxers 2, Notre Dame Cougars 2. We'd also like to thank the one the only postman, Mike Simmons, for sending out the tweets of the score to the general public. You can follow us at Brockton Channel on Twitter. A little bit of self-advertising uh, here for BCA Sports. While we're on the topic of self-advertising, Aaron Tebow, Spirits of the Dead, will be playing pretty much now through the end of Halloween night about 20 times a day. One of the best short films I've seen in my entire life. And it feels as though I've lived a very long time. Can't wait to see the addition to the cinematic collection by Aaron Tebow. It'll be a, a hundred seconds or less, and it will be premiering at the Easton 102nd Film Festival. Deadlines for submissions are October 31st, Halloween. And there's only two rules. It has to be original, it has to be a hundred seconds or less. Other than that, go nuts. So I'm very excited to see, I hear they're getting submissions from all over the world, Singapore, Israel, Brockton, Massachusetts, California, good defense there by Brockton, we'll have Notre Dame throw in, but Aaron Tebow is producing, directing, shooting, lighting, audio audioing, cameramanning, everything for his short film, which has yet to be titled. But that is easily one of the most anticipated films, in my eyes, of the 100 Second Film Festival. Notre Dame with an opportunity. The Brockton defender one-hops it and kicks it back out to midfield. Notre Dame takes over. Just about 15 minutes left in unofficial time. Here's a two on one for the Brockton Boxers. Jennifer Caruso crosses it. And they whistled that off sides, I believe. Yes, we have an offsides called on Brockton. I don't know how. That was onsides the whole way. And when Jen Crusoe crossed it, that was number 14 running with her, Maria Del Pico. The rest ruled it was offsides, so it's offsides. And there's an opportunity for Notre Dame bringing it up through midfield. Back and forth action going on, and that one goes out of bounds. It gives the Brockton Boxers a chance to get back defensively. Notre Dame throwing. Right to the middle of the field. An opportunity, a shot, a save by Lauren Sieber, who has continued to be solid for the Brockton Boxers. And she boots it to the 50-yard line. Notre Dame lets it roll out of bounds and we'll have a throw in. Brockton has it for the moment. The score is tied 2 2. Mad Dog Matt Nelson bringing you all the action from Marciano Stadium.
So an encouraging sight. We see Lindsey Gomes on the field for the Brockton Boxers. Looked like just a cramp and she comes back in the game and she has been a shutdown defender for the Brockton Boxers tonight. That one goes out of bounds and we'll have a Brockton Boxer throw in and a substitute for Brockton, number seven, Mariah Texera will be coming in for number 14, Maria Del Pico. Notre Dame takes over possession of midfield. Brockton has it. Notre Dame has it. Brockton has it. I don't know who has it. Someone's got it because it's still in bounds. Narita Montrand had it momentarily and then Notre Dame took over. Notre Dame seems to have possession for the moment. Good move by Notre Dame's forward. Right out in front. Lauren Seaver, an excellent save. And we have an injury right in front of Brockton's net. That is a Notre Dame player down. Lauren Seaver. Not many words can can define what she has done for the Brockton Boxes in goal tonight. So we have another injury for Marciano Stadium tonight. The trainer Jerry Connors is running out. That is number three by my unofficial count of times that Jerry Connors has had to run out onto the field. And you never want to see this in a high school soccer game. Or any game, really. So the score is tied at two apiece between your Brockton Boxers and the Cougars of Notre Dame Academy. Excellent play defensively. From both teams, excellent goalkeeping, both teams. A lot of opportunities offensively, both teams. Very evenly matched game. We've got a couple of the Brockton players stretching during this timeout due to injury. I want to give a shout out to the one, the only Mike Postman Simmons, who is currently waiting outside for us to pick him up. They kicked him out. He was covering the superintendent transition team meeting over at North Junior High. And the meeting ended. And now he's got to wait for the BCA sports team to get over there and pick him up. Lots of car issues from the uh, the award-winning staff over at BCA recently. Postman Simmons will have his car back hopefully tomorrow. It had a little boo-boo, we'll put it. I mean, it's been in the shop for the last two months. So two months, it's going to be a little more than a little boo-boo. Aaron Tebow's car was hijacked by his wife, Liz Tebow. Mad Dog Matt Nelson just got a new used vehicle. Our general manager, Mark Lindy, just got a new vehicle. Our assistant general manager is next in line. Jay Miller is, is going to step up his game. And Aaron Tebow is going to step up his game, too. Three quarters of the, uh, the week when he's working... He doesn't have a car. So we've still got a timeout due to injury of Notre Dame. And you hope it's a leg cramp. You see Jerry Connors working on the leg of the Notre Dame player who gets up gingerly. 
And she's standing up under her own power, which is always a good sign. This brings up the debate of high school sports. You have these violent collisions, not just in soccer. You've got football, always a controversial topic with the concussions. And the Notre Dame player is walking off, being helped by her coach, Liz Musta Foskey. And she will be looked at by Jerry Connors on the sideline we're going to go back to playing so just about 12 minutes left in unofficial time Lauren Seaver kicks it downfield. Number seven for the boxers, Mariah Texera has it. Near to Montron charges at it. Jen Caruso, maybe. Mariah Texera. Deflected pass, and Notre Dame has it for the moment. Now Brockton takes over, goes off of a, def a forward's face, and she is down. Number 11 for Notre Dame. Keely McAfee, the junior midfielder, is down. She took a soccer ball to the face. I can't remember the last time Jerry's been this busy. Jerry, we got to give a shout out to the athletic training for Brockton High, Jerry Connors. She's, she's running almost as much as the players on the field. And we've got a ball to the face injury to Keely McAfee for Notre Dame. And now we've got four times this game that Jerry Connors has had to run out onto the field due to injury. I keep saying it's been an even game in all aspects of the game. Each team has had two players have to be attended to Jerry Connors. So it's even in that aspect as well. So we have another injury stoppage here at Marciano Stadium. We're going to take this opportunity to hand the mic over to Aaron Tebow if he wants to give a shout out to anybody or anything. Hello. Words of Wisdom brought to you by Aaron Tebow. Doesn't get much better than that. I'm cold. Apparently our cameraman Aaron Tebow is being affected by the weather here at Marciano Stadium. A beautiful night, however it is a little bit on the cold side. And Keely McAfee gets up and is walking off under her own power. So just under 12 minutes in unofficial time. It's been about 30 seconds between injuries for the Notre Dame Cougars. Jerry Conn is a very busy woman tonight. They're really making her earn anything she earns tonight. And we have a drop ball, something I've never seen before in soccer. Reminds me of a jump ball in basketball. So the ref drops it. And good defense by Brockton. We'll have a goal kick, corner kick, goal kick, maybe corner kick, throw in, throw in. We could have gotten one of each. And an excellent stop by, made by Lauren Seaver. So we just had a drop ball. 
I've never seen that in my many years. I'm working on my seventh year of BCA sports coverage. Nobody had possession, so I guess that was the only fair way to decide who gets it. Good defense. We have a whistle. We have a Brockton kick forthcoming. And it will be Lindsey Gomes taking the kick from the five yard line. Low line drive, right out to midfield. Notre Dame takes over. Lindsey Gomes misses it. Lauren Seaver out, doesn't pick it up. She just kicks it right out. Notre Dame with it now. Brockton with it. And it goes out of bounds, so Notre Dame will take over again. When I say back and forth action here at Marciano Stadium tonight, I really mean back and forth action. That one straight out on that goes right into the hands of Lauren Seaver. Mad Dog Matt Nelson bring you all the action. Somewhat of a bad kick by Lauren Seaver. Notre Dame takes over. We have a push called on Notre Dame and Brockton will have a free kick. The score is Brockton Boxers 2, Notre Dame Cougars 2. Colombo Field here at Marciano Stadium. Mad Dog Matt Nelson bringing you all the action alongside the one, the only Aaron Tebow. That one goes right out of bounds, so we'll have a Notre Dame throw in. Notre Dame has possession for the moment. Bring it up through midfield. That one looks as if it's going to go out of bounds. No, Notre Dame able to keep it in. Lindsey Gomes charging up. Opportunity for Notre Dame here. A shot off the post of the soccer goal, off the post of the football crossbar. And through the uprights, and I believe that will be a field goal for Notre Dame. We have a timeout. Why do we have a timeout? We'll have a corner kick, I believe. We have a corner kick from Notre Dame. Good header by Brockton. They kick it up. Clear the danger as of now. We're gonna have an offsides call. Saw that one coming from a mile away. I don't know why you're complaining about it. Just under eight minutes of unofficial time. The official time is kept on the field. Lindsey Gomes kicks that one up and out. We're going to have a couple of substitutions, maybe. We don't know what's going on. We're waiting for a ball on the sidelines. Notre Dame controlling at midfield. Bring it up through Brockton's defensive zone and that one goes out of bounds. Lauren Seaver, another strong save and she's going to kick it out. That one bounces at the 45 yard line and goes another 10 yards past that before any player touches it. Brockton with a good opportunity here. She's open, a kick, and a goal! Mariah Texera 
out for the Brockton Boxers gives them the one goal edge with time waning here in the second half. What a game. What a game. What a game. What a play. The Boxers had offensive numbers downfield in the Notre Dame zone. And they capitalized on the defensive mistake by Notre Dame. 3 2. Brockton Boxers in the lead. Just under six minutes of unofficial time left. Notre Dame has the ball momentarily. They kick it up. We're going to have onsides, but it won't matter as Lauren Seaver comes out of the net to make another good save. And she kicks a low line drive. Stopped by Notre Dame at the 30-yard line. However, Brockton takes over off of a lucky bounce. Brockton bring it up through the offensive zone. Notre Dame kicks it out to midfield. Relieves the pressure as of now. Opportunity here for the Brockton. Jen Caruso bring it up. She's at the 15, the 10, the 5, the end zone. The kick is up and just wide. Opportunities left and right for the Brockton boxes in the second half of the second half of this game between the Notre Dame Cougars and the Brockton Boxers. We're gonna have a kick, a penalty called on Notre Dame. So we'll have a Brockton Boxers free kick. It's gonna be taken by Narita Montrand at the 25 yard line. Opportunity for the boxes, and they're just unable to connect as time ticks down to just under four minutes of unofficial time. Notre Dame controlling. Rita Montrand, excellent step up defensively and takes the ball. Opportunity for Brockton, the cross. A little bit too high, however, it's okay because there's another Brockton forward. A shot and a good save by Maggie Elliott for Notre Dame. Notre Dame beat them one to nothing last week. I'm being told by our chief statistician for today's game, Suzanne DeFalco, that Notre Dame beat the Brockton Boxers one to nothing just last week. We have another stoppage and we're going to have another Brockton free kick. So we got a little bit of a rivalry going between these two teams. Uh, always a close game. From the 30 yard line, this is Narita Montrand. The kick, the header. It's open in the box. And we have a whistle. And it will be Notre Dame's ball. A goal kick. Excellent stop there by Notre Dame's midfielder. And a, a bad kick by Lindsey Gomes leads to a turnover. Notre Dame kicks it up. Lindsey Gomes fighting with the Notre Dame player. It'll be a goal kick. The refs rule it out on Notre Dame. So time tick, 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 down to two minutes. Official time will be kept on the field. We're gonna take this opportunity to recognize the goal scorers tonight. We've got Maya Powers for the Brockton Boxers. We've got Jen Caruso for the Brockton Boxers. And we've got Mariah Texera for the Brockton Boxers. On the Notre Dame side, we've got Hannah Volpe and Morgan Karen. And those are brought to you by the chief statistician, Suzanne DeFalco, which is now an official title, chief statistician. So feel free to add that to your resume, Suzanne. Back and forth action, 
Brockton with an opportunity here. He, Notre Dame takes over. The action speaks for itself. I don't even know why they brought me in tonight. And we have Brockton now possessing the ball at midfield. Notre Dame takes over. Notre Dame has it. Good spin move there by the Notre Dame forward. Opportunity, a shot, and an excellent jumping save by Lauren Seaver. Lauren Seaver, another excellent save. Notre Dame has it at midfield. Now Brockton has it. Now Notre Dame has it. Back and forth action here as time is ticking down. That one goes all the way down in a straight line towards the corner. Notre Dame wins the foot race and Brockton able to kick that one out. Throw in for Notre Dame. Notre Dame still has possession. Opportunity here for Notre Dame. They cross it right to the middle. And a little bit of a miscommunication there as Lauren Seaver charges out of the net with Lindsey Gomes charging back towards the net, both wanting to corral that ball. So with just a minute left, we have a stoppage and a kick for Notre Dame. It is desperation time for the Notre Dame Cougars. Back and forth action. Brockton has it. Jen Crusoe charging upfield. She's got an opportunity. She's got one player to beat. The kick is up. Off the post. Off the post. Jen Caruso almost had her second of the game. And that will do it. Words cannot describe what just happened. Wow. Holy cow. Holy cow. The only words that can describe what went down at Marciano Stadium tonight. We're going to give the game ball to Lauren Seaver, the goalkeeper of Brockton. Keeping a minute, a number of excellent saves. Wow. What a game. I don't even know what the, the, the final thoughts are going to be here. Excellent game played all around defensively, offensively, goalkeeping, both teams. Last second opportunities for Brockton. Jen Caruso hit it off the top post. It hit the bottom of that post and bounced out of the net. So that is no goal. And uh, we've had a couple of posts on both teams now. Uh, Notre Dame had a couple of opportunities that proved to be the killer off the right post of Brockton. And now the teams will do the ceremonial good game, handshake line, high five. Wow. What a game. Easily one of the best games we've seen all year out of the Brockton Boxers girls varsity soccer team. Your final score from Colombo Field at Marciano Stadium. Notre Dame Cougars 2, Brockton Boxers with the come from behind victory. Win 3 to 2. Want to thank our cast and crew Cameraman, Aaron Tebow, Mad Dog Matt Nelson, your commentator, bringing you all the action. Our key statistician, Suzanne DeFalco, and tweeting out to the public, Mike Postman Simmons. So we want to thank all of the BCA crew, and we will see you for the next game here at Marciano Stadium. Once again, your final from Marciano Stadium, Brockton Boxers 3, Notre Dame Cougars 2. We'll see you next time.